game inventory systems are not generic. Every game with some kind of inventory will have its own requirements, therefore every one of you watching this video will be here for something slightly different. Rather than try to spend hours showing you one all-encompassing solution, I'm going to use this video to show you the most basic foundation I think a game with an inventory will need, and then follow it up with expansion videos based on interest. So to be clear, today we're going to learn how to create an inventory as a simple list of items, display the inventory as a grid of any dimensions, add to that list of items, remove things from that list of items, and check for the existence of an item. This part here is kind of a bonus on top of the whole basics thing, skip it if you don't need it. Make a new object called OInventory, add the create event, and we're going to add the following. Now normally I'd put all my macros in a separate script for organization, but for simplicity I've put it here. This number decides how many slots are in the inventory, this number decides how many slots fit in one row. Combined together this will give the size of the grid. Think about it like a World of Warcraft inventory. A small silk pack has 10 slots and a max of 4 per row. Our inventory will work in the same kind of style. This line actually creates our inventory and it's as simple as that. We make an array 15 slots long and default each entry to minus 1. If you don't know what an array is, it's like a single column of a spreadsheet. Each cell can have something different in it and can be identified by its row number. So from now on if we type inventory with square brackets and a number, we are getting that entry of the array. I do a randomize here which just randomizes our game's random number generation, making sure we get different numbers every time we get random numbers. This is only important because we're going to add some random items to the inventory later on as a test. Here I'm just adding three items to the inventory also as a test, two of item type 0 and one of item type 1. Remember that an empty slot is negative 1, not 0. Now we're going to draw the inventory. These are the images that we're going to use. S inventory is the main box everything else lives in. I'm using the new 9 slice feature which lets me cut this image into 9 slices and then make any rectangle I want by just tiling and stretching them. This means we can make a box of any size without distorting the artwork. This is S slot, just a 32 by 32 box that shows an item slot. Then we draw over that with S items. Each frame of this sprite contains our images, so you can see item 0 and frame 0 as this potion, and item 1 as a smaller, differently coloured potion. I told you we're keeping it simple. Now let's add the draw step to our inventory. Now there's a hundred ways to draw an inventory. This section is kind of optional. Do it how you like. Really the important part is just drawing the items from the array, which we'll see in a second. But first of all we're going to draw our 9 slice box like this. This could just be one line, but if you've got long arguments for a function and it would be a bit hard to read on one line, don't be afraid to just separate it out like this. Okay, just put the brackets on the following lines and just, you know, put, put each argument on its own line. I use magic numbers here. If you want you can define all these numbers as variables. I'm just trying to keep it simple. The idea here is to use draw sprite stretched with our 9 slice image to define a rectangle to draw the inventory in. We use the xy of the object subtracting a small margin for the border, then we add twice that margin to the width and the height. The width is simply our row length multiplied by 32 plus 4, so 36 pixels, to add some space between each slot. The height is trickier, we do div to get the number of times row length goes into our slots total minus 1 plus 1 multiplied by that same amount. This means that for every time we cross over our row length we get an extra 36 pixels of height. Like I said this is all optional, this is just for drawing in a grid. Next up draw the items themselves and this is the important part. The for loop here will let us repeat this code a number of times equal to the size of our inventory while giving us a handy variable that goes up by one each time that we can use to determine which slot we want to draw next. These two lines give us the x and y position on the grid. Mod returns the remainder of a division, so it will count up towards row length until it hits it, then it will return to zero. Perfect for deciding where to draw each item horizontally. For y, we get the number of times row length can fit into the current item. So if we were on item 12 and row length was 5, this would come back as 2. Then we draw the slot at this location. And if this section of our inventory is not empty, that is it doesn't equal minus 1, then draw the appropriate frame of S items here as well to draw the actual item. Run this now and if you've done everything right you'll have this, our three potions and a bunch of empty slots. Change inventory slots and row length a bit and notice the effect it has on the grid. Now we need to learn how to manipulate this inventory. For this we'll create a script called inventory functions and get rid of any default code. Whenever we do anything with the inventory we're almost always going to look for something first, whether it's the first empty slot to add something to, or the slot that contains an item we want to remove, change, or check for, we need to loop over the items in order. So first we'll create a function called inventory search that looks like this. 
we will require two arguments for this function, the root object, which is the ID of the O inventory object itself, and the item type that we're looking for. The reason I'm getting root object is to give you a bit of flexibility and allow you to add multiple inventories easily. Say if you have multiple players or characters or bags or inventories, whatever, right? Then just like when we draw the inventory, we use a simple for loop to repeatedly check each entry of the inventory array of that inventory object for a specific item. Or we can even look for minus one to find the first empty slot. When we reach a slot that matches, we use return to provide wherever we called this search function uh, with the first slot number that contained what we were looking for. This ends the for loop right here. If the loop completes without returning, then we know there is no slot that matches and we can return minus one. So we know if this function returns minus one, no slot matches what we're looking for. With this function done, we can now add two more functions to let us add or remove items from the inventory. As you can see, these two functions are very similar. We get the root object and the item type we want to add or remove, just the same as before. Then we call inventory search and pass the result into a variable called underscore slot. For remove, we look for a specific item. Then if a slot with that item exists, we set that slot to be minus one. For add, we instead look for the first empty slot in the inventory. Then if an empty slot exists, we put the new item type into that slot. In both cases, we return true or false for good measure so that we know if we failed to add an item because the inventory was full or failed to remove one because that item didn't exist. Now, I've set up some test button press events to show you how to use these functions. This, for example, will test to see if an item of type 1, the orange potion in this case, exists and will output 1 or 0, true or false, to the console. This button will add either 0 or 1, so a blue or orange potion entirely at random, to the next available slot. And this button will remove the first orange potion that it finds. Notice each time I have to provide ID, this is because I'm calling these from the inventory object itself. If you only have one inventory object, you can call these from anywhere just using O inventory in place of this, or by providing the instance ID of whichever inventory object you want to check or manipulate in the case of as I said, multiple players, etc. So now I'll quickly demonstrate. As you can see, we have our two blue potions and our orange potion that are set up by default. If I press uh, C right now, you can see it's outputting a one to the uh, console window because we have an orange potion. If I press D, it's gonna remove the first orange potion it finds. So now we just have two blue potions. And if I press C again, you'll see we start getting zeros because there aren't any orange potions there. If I press P, we're gonna add some potions at random, which just like fill the inventory up like that. Um, if I press C now, you'll see we get one again because there are orange potions. If I press D, it's going to delete them, starting from the top left and going all the way through. Um, then when we get rid of them all, if we press C, we have zero again, right? So hopefully that shows you a bit of how you can manipulate your inventory. Now there are endless possibilities from here, sorting, clicking and dragging, stacking, tooltips, etc. If you want to have a say in the directions we expand this tutorial, consider becoming one of these awesome people who fund my videos via Patreon. If I've helped you with this video, please do remember to like it. If I haven't, remember to dislike it. You know how to use YouTube by now. Hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.